Vegas for literally two whole days and came right back for a conference that I found out through the Choose FI podcast hosted by Brad Barrett and uh, he announced that he was going to in partnership with the couple Alan and Katie Donegan host People. Yes, lovely people, all of them. They were going to host this special 80-person uh, capped event that would be in Las Vegas. They advertised it initially as a, a place to come together in, with the FI community, or what they call financial independence uh, community. And I really have been a fan of the podcast for a bit, and I thought, well, this is our chance to, to meet the guy. So I said, Dan, do you want to go to Las Vegas? And he's like, yeah. Yeah. And what's a little bit bittersweet is we've been wanting to go to Las Vegas for a while. We had a friend out there. And we should dedicate this episode, Dan, to Josh Green. What do you say? He, uh, he lived in Las Vegas for a number of years, but uh, he unfortunately passed away. About two years ago now? I think it's two years ago now. So um, we obviously couldn't hang out with him, but it was really interesting to be in Vegas. And it was very interesting to meet these people and get into the minds of this movement. So we went, we arrived, we landed very late Friday night, right? We rented a van, which was interesting in its own right, which by the way, if you don't know, it might be a resource to you that is a little bit cheaper. It's called Toro, where you can rent people's personal vehicles. And we rented this mega huge oversized van. We actually stayed in the hotel where the event was going to be. And uh, the hotel was great. It was a Hilton Garden Inn, huge room. And we brought our new assistant, Jashima Divine. Thank you, Jashima, for having an adventurous spirit and going with us. The event, I thought, initially, was going to be more about the technicalities of pursuing financial independence. How does one do it? What tactics should be employed? You know, how could someone earn more income to save more? That really wasn't it. It was really more about once you've reached financial independence. Zen. You, right. People think it's all Zen, rainbows and butterflies. But their point is it's not. And really it's about what you do with that newfound freedom. And and really money affords you a greater degree of autonomy. It was making a huge assumption that you're either very, very close to getting there or you're already there. There have been a, a large number of people who have 
push themselves and 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 reach these certain goals, financial goals. And a lot of times they have certain they have certain characteristics of how they live their life. They're often big travelers, so they'll travel from country to country living very low cost lives. They formerly had high earning jobs such as software engineers, consultants, graphic designers. These are typically jobs that were earning high levels of income. They worked for X number of years, sometimes as little as 10 years, and they've saved, 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 lower, lower, lower costs. And then they get to this number and they pull out and they stop the, the work that they were doing. So this conference was about, well, what do you do once you've reached that point, once you've actually gotten to that goal of financial independence, if you will, what do you do? How do you live an extraordinary life? As the Donegans refer to it. What I thought was really interesting is they emphasize that most people if not all the people in the room present, uh, we're already living extraordinary lives. And I believe that. I think most of us don't really realize how many things we've done that are quite impressive, extraordinary, praiseworthy, all the things. Uh, and we just take them for granted or we don't think that much of those things. That was a really good starting point. Um, I would say the first day was all about goal setting. They made an interesting distinction that a lot of people in the fire or fi movement will be moving away from something. They'll be trying to leave a job that they find burdensome, annoying, exasperating, horrible, whatever. Oh, or... Forward. Yeah. And so then they made the distinction that if you're if you're coming from that place of always trying to run away from something, it's a very frustrating place to be. And I would agree. I I've been there many times. And it is a source of frustration. And what they wanted people to rethink is to think of it as moving forward towards something, as Dan says. As people are working towards, if they haven't reached it already, that that goal number of financial independence, that they, they have something, not just that number to look forward to or to work towards. They have to have, figure out what is it that they actually want to do with the newfound time that they're buying themselves for the future or in the future. And that's a really important point. A lot of people, even if they take the conventional path towards retirement and they stay in the workforce well into their 60s, they often find themselves at a loss, adrift. They don't know really what to do anymore because so much of their job defined them. And that I think is very, very true. So we, we work through a lot of those beliefs, those conventional beliefs, and we did a lot of goal setting and small goals such as I wanna I wanna not eat dessert every night that that I don't feel good about or to I want to help people with disabilities uh, become financially independent like that's a huge goal it was enjoyable to imagine and dream and write it down. Wow. this for a while and there's zero zero wealth coming from it only only a psychological wealth that's coming from this channel but yeah, it has a great goal the second part of the conference was to work through the obstacles or stories that we tell ourselves the belief systems 
that we have about ourselves that hold us back from even considering any of the goals that are thought of. And that one was tough. I think particularly for Dan and I, we have a lot of limiting beliefs that 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 hold us back. There are things that I've certainly told myself, oh, maybe I can't do that, or it would be too difficult, or I wouldn't know how. The second day was also about taping an episode um, for the Choose uh, FI podcast with the group. I, I don't know if I'll be featured as one of the people that speak in the podcast, but I did go up and I made a point. You did, Nancy. Yeah. I didn't want to go up. I didn't want to go up. I was very nervous and I just felt that it was too charged the question that I was going to ask. We talk about it in another episode, but I really do think that the, this, this movement oversimplifies uh, the path. It's not as easy and it's, and it's not easy for everyone. There are certain groups of people, mainly people with disabilities that have significant expenses and rely on different government benefits who would be almost entirely barred from from pursuing this path. And I don't think that this community recognize that as much um, and offers as much help as they could to find a way out of that quagmire. Um, and so my question to to the hosts... To my... You like that one, Dave? Wow. No, that, that's, I think that's a noun. <laughs> My question to the host w was, um, how can I help uh, this community? How can I help, or how could we collectively help people with disabilities get on this path? I believe that everyone should have the right to pursue financial independence. It should be a right but it isn't that way currently. Our system, our government isn't set up um, for everyone to potentially pursue this path. It was a heavy question to ask. I mean, it, and I don't think that they really knew what to do with, with the question. So if, you, if they end up choosing it, go. But I mean, I highly recommend the podcast. It's a very informative po podcast. The host, Brad Barrett, is very generous with his insight. Uh, he was very gracious at the event. Mm -hmm. I spoke with them. Um, so were Al Alan and, and Katie, mm -hmm. really wonderful mm -hmm. people. And the people there were extremely mm -hmm. welcoming. Um, a few people came up to us afterward and, and recognized, like, thank you for bringing this up. So it, it was very refreshing and and uplifting. I'm very grateful that we were able to make it out there and to hear people and to be a part of it. Um, I think we're gonna do another one. Are we gonna do another one day? Mm -hmm. But maybe not quite as far, because ironically, <laughs> we went out there to learn about finance and how to save more and just tips and tricks. We spent more money to go to this one trip for like two days than we could, we would have spent like for a 10 day trip. And that was because of all the things, you know, all the things, an accessible van rental, uh, room rental. We had to pay for our assistant to go out with us. All these little things are directly related to disability and, you know, Alright, well, uh, uh, yeah, until next time, folks, keep it getting cheap. Okay. Tap subscribe.